how lost in translation do you get sometimes? Oh, you could get incredibly lost. Um, and one of the funniest things about it, I always say this to my students, is that everyone thinks, oh, translation must be very hard because you'll be reading a text and you'll see words that you don't know, right? Everyone always has this, you know, oh, it's going to be the words that you don't know that would be very hard. The words that you don't know are so easy. You look them up, right? There you go. The words that you know exactly what they mean, you know exactly what they refer to, but you simply cannot find a way to express that same thing in the other language are the words that drive you crazy, right? Those are the words that really give you problems. Um, and those are, every time I have a translation class, you know, you'll have, you know, a sentence or two where everything's going along just fine, right? And then you hit on one of these unsayable things where it's perfectly clear, you know, you, you know what the original text is doing, but how do you do that yeah. in the language that you're moving it into? So do you have a specific example at the moment where you got lost in translation recently? Um, I translated an Argentine novel called Sama. And um, it was the first time Sama had ever been translated into English, though. It was written in 1956. And in Argentina, it's considered one of the absolute masterpieces of the 20th century, not just in Argentina, all over the Spanish speaking world. But it had the, it it doesn't really correspond to the things that the zoom uh, the, the boom rather zoom boom oh my god the things that the boom uh of the 60s and 70s that we were alluding to earlier um the qualities about latin american literature that the boom was looking for right so it's a very different kind of book and it was overlooked in the boom and i really wanted to bring it into english um for a lot of reasons um, it's set in colonial Paraguay, and its narrator, Don Diego de Sama, is consistently referred to as un americano, because as a subject of the Spanish Empire, he was born in the New World, which means that, um, and they, but they don't say criollo, which would be the other word, uh, occasionally criollo pops up, but quite often he refers to himself as un americano. And um, it's it that was a very, of course, obviously, I know what Americano means in that context. I know that it means that he's a subject of the Spanish Empire born in the New World, which prohibits him from rising above a certain level in the hierarchy, in the imperial hierarchy, because Spain was very rigid about that. And only people born in Europe could become the, at the could could occupy the top levels of the hierarchy because they feared disloyalty from those who born and raised in the Americas. Um, so I know all of that, but how do I convey that to my readers in the United States in 2023 who see the word American and they think that must mean he's from the United States? right, who, who don't have that, who, who know very little about the history of the Spanish Empire for the most part, right? And um, it's interesting, some traditions of translation permit footnoting, um, but in the United States, especially when it's the first translation of a new novel, um, translators are very, very discouraged from using footnotes, you know? So one could sort of discursively describe everything I've just done, but how could I convey that the word American in this context has a different sense from what it might have, you know, if two people were talking about, um, you know, being Americans in New York City in 2023, right? Um, and so the way that I found to do that was um, in the English translation, Don Diego de Sama refers to himself as an Americano. So I left the word in Spanish so that readers would appreciate that this was a term used in Spanish, used in this context in Spanish, with no relation to the United States. The United States doesn't exist in this book. Don Diego doesn't even, you know, there may be colonies up far, no, he's in Paraguay. Just his, his brain does not extend that far. He dreams of France, he dreams of Russia, but the United States has no interest for him. Um, 
so that was how I tried to convey it. Um, I even now, um, since I since I chose that decision, that's how the book was published. A friend of mine wrote a history that went on to win the Pulitzer Prize. Um, called Cuba an American history, right? Um, which was doing two things as a title. Um, on the one hand, she was pointing out that Cuba is in an American nation, therefore that America is something larger than the United States. Uh, with, with a Canadian background, I know that I am preaching to the converted with this particular point. Um, but she was, but it's also very much a history of relations between Cuba and the United States. So she was kind of using the word American in both senses, which is something that people in the United States love to do. Um, so I don't, I think even now, and I would hope that, you know, at some point our vocabulary will actually keep up, you know, enter into reality and we'll stop thinking of ourselves as America. Um, or people have been waiting hundreds of years for that. It hasn't happened yet. Um, but I think even now I would still choose to to do what I did and translate Americano as Americano just to try and 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 give some kind of lesson to my readers and and defeat their assumptions.